Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Tando Luenko Sintembu. I'm from South Africa, living in California, USA. I thought to open this channel for me with the story of basically my life. I'm 33 now and a lot has happened in between my defining moment and now. And I feel like it's important to share how, in, how a defining moment makes you the woman that you, you are and continues to make you the woman that you'll be. And so here's my testimony. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> my heart has always been so much with um, mothers and so much with young mothers as well um, and people who decided to step up as mothers even though they didn't plan to be um, because I'm one of those people. The caption of this video is strange because it's like from UCT dropout pregnant <laughs> disappointing her parents to Oxford Brooks master's graduate pastor and professor in California, USA. And it's like, no, this is not a how-to. Um, but basically, this is a story of the in-between, all of that. And the in-between is scary and exciting and amazing. And um, it's, it's everything. And that's what I want to share because a lot of us are in the in-between. I feel like I'm still in the in-between. And there's just so much more out there for me and I can't wait to see what that is so young young people gather around let's go <laughs> um i remember i think for me being at uct was a blur i was there for six years but when i think of it it was like poof, literally a snap of a finger i was young coming from the township of hammersdale that's where i was born um, and my parents moved to the burbs and my parents are pastors and grew up in the church and everything. And, you know, growing up in the church is strange when you're a young black woman, because there's a lot of emphasis on purity and I've had to grow to understand what purity actually is and what it actually me means. Um, but there was this emphasis around the fact that we were these pure cute little flowers and we were going to heaven and like we were set and as long as we kept ourselves pure we we're going to heaven and so fast forward i now have a baby and i've disappointed my parents and my next video is going to be about how i struggled for 10 years after my pregnancy to forgive myself but i have a baby now and i'm not pure i guess and in my head, no one's checking for me. Um, and I felt like no one was checking for me, not just in terms of the love department, but just in terms of the life department. I felt like this is the worst thing a woman could ever do. This is the worst thing a young girl could ever do. And that it was either I was going to survive this and just be like, okay, or I was just going to get worse. And so the advices I used to get were like, don't have another one. And I'm like, really? <laughs> you know? But coming back home from UCT, I was on a scholarship, youngest, brightest, blackest vibes. And coming home with nothing, no degree, with a baby was traumatic because I didn't plan this. But I was like putting on this brave face. And I want to talk also about playing brave and um but not actually necessarily having the courage but playing um that that brave face and i think for me the most traumatic part was being like oh the worst people i've disappointed here are church people and i'm like but that's so strange and i felt comfort from people who were not outside the church as well who were more understanding and perhaps it's because they're ex they expected a young girl like me with the township background 
to four pregnant, disappointed parents not finish her education. I was a statistic. And at UCT, I found no, no support as well in terms of my academics. And that was such a defining moment for me as now a black academic um, because I found that when I was there at UCT, you know, it was like, oh, this is what black girls do. And my lecturers were all white people. Um, and most of them were men in the architecture department and so forth. And so I don't think anybody was kind of like concerned about my future. And so I left very broken. I remember a friend of mine um, being devastated and just kind of being like, UCT was all I wanted, was all I ever knew to be the greatest thing I could ever do. People from back home didn't go to UCT and I was devastated. And my whole goal, even when I left UCT with the baby, was to go back to UCT and graduate on those UCT steps. Um, and it never happened. And I remember my friend said to me, Tando, you do realize there are other universities. And I was like, what do you mean? What do you... And she said, in the world. Oh, my mind was blown. <laughs> and this whole world opened up to me like, oh yeah, there are other countries. There are other architecture departments. There are other architectural degrees. And I could go there. And it changed my life forever, forever. Um, so I think it was also a defining moment for my parents. I'm not going to say things like it humbled them or whatever, but it did in that they always were counseling other people and other families who had young children um, and young girls who are falling pregnant. Um, but it was always something that was distant from them. Although they had daughters, it was always something like, I'm pretty sure my kids wouldn't do that, you know? <laughs> And, and when it happened to them, it was a defining moment in that, listen, your ministry is going to change here. Yeah? Um, and it's going to get real because you're not going to be um, the poster card for the perfect family, but you're going to be the poster card for a family that God is perfecting. And he's doing that individually for the people who are in your family. And I think that was just an amazing moment for them. Um, listen, it wasn't amazing in the moment. <laughs> But it was defining, and that's what defining is. If you are right now in a space where things aren't going according to plan, but there's that inkling feeling or that small little light in the darkness that says, there is more than this, or this is not the end, that could be your defining moment. A defining moment literally crushes you and takes you to the depths of yourself, yourself and I remember that in this defining moment, I realized I didn't have a relationship with God. I didn't have a relationship with Christ. And I was saved and I was doing all the things that saved people do. But now that I was on the back burner and no one cared about me, I had to get real. Now I actually was listening to the sermon instead of being you know, in the front with the worship team or doing this, doing that. Now I was in the back seats kind of really absorbing what was going on and reflecting on my own life. And I realized I don't have a relationship with God. If I didn't fall pregnant, I wouldn't be a pastor today. Because for me, it was happy times. We're all going to heaven. And it's fun times. And we're perfect. We're going to be pure. And we'll find our husbands and get married and just live happily ever after. But that defining moment was a juncture where it was like, you actually don't know what you're doing. And you need to get real. You know? And that was for me everything and it has made me who i am and will continue to make me the woman that i'll become in the future very very exciting when i think about the future another thing another thing about um this whole thing of having a pregnancy that you didn't plan for but deciding that i'm going to be a mother i didn't plan for this but what am i going to do and um it takes everything out of you to parent. And when you become a parent, it brings up all the things about who you are in your childhood to the fore and to the surface every single day, in your face, every hour. And it has been an incredible, incredible journey, but incredibly risky, incredibly emotional, incredibly, yeah, 
incredibly defining and defining for me is really the theme of this video. I decided that I was going to graduate three times before I turned the age of 30. And this was my goal. And I reached that goal. And the third time I graduated was my master's in the United Kingdom under this fancy scholarship um, at Oxford Brookes University. And I was so excited. But I realized also that I was doing these things to really prove that I'm not a statistic. I'm not, you know, your regular, you know, baby mama from the ghetto. You know, I'm smart. I'm intelligent. But I, I was only proving that to who? Because people who really knew me knew that about me. And this is another thing. The people around you, what are they saying when you're going through such a defining moment? Um, that friend of mine who said to me, Tando, there are other universities. She didn't see a UCT dropout who could not achieve anything more than that. Um, but she could see something in me that was more than a UCT dropout, even more than a UCT graduate. She was like, you could achieve more than what, you, you, what you're crying for. And that's what she was trying to get into my mind and into my brain. Um, whereas other people... <laughs> I, guys... You know the whole, you've disappointed your parents, and it's like, I know, you know? Um, but that, that, that message didn't help me much, you know, because it also made me go deeper into this hole of not being able to forgive myself. And I struggled with that for 10 years, um, and I had deep anger within me, and I was lashing out to the people who were closest to me, including my parents. And luckily, I have a father who who studied psychology and he's he was a professional social worker back you know decades ago and um he does counseling and everything so he could see right through me and he knew what was going on and he said he stopped me and said tando um you're angry all right and you're taking it out on us and it needs to stop you're hurt and you're hurting us and it was just like what is going on in my life what is going on yeah crazy for me being able to define what success is and moving on with my life and becoming the woman that i am and defining it for myself like what is success is it this is it that but for me and for me i had to decide that success was being happy because that came few and far in between um, for me in my life and that wasn't good enough and I was like I need to be happier more and um, I need to have more joy in my life and that is happiness despite of what's going on um, I have a problem I'm a chronic optimist like I will always look on the bright side always I don't know if this is something that was you know that I was born with or I have kind of nurtured inside of me but I always 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 look on the bright side and i'm always optimistic about the situation like you can never ever like break my spirit type of thing and even when i was holding my child i was 22 years old and i had spent six years at uct and had nothing to show for it um i was optimistic i was still hopeful and you know and thinking about it now it's that hope that christ you know and i always think like mom and i just like where are you? Like, when I say Jesus, I'm going to let you know what I'm saying. And that's that hope that Christ puts in you. When I was holding my child, 22 years old, and having to kind of start over and see what's going on with my life, there was still hope in me. And I was like, I'm going to be an architect, you know, and I'm going to be great, and I'm going to be successful, and I'm going to make my parents proud, and, you know, and all that stuff. So it's been quite the journey. And this thing is simple. It's not your territory. It's not your territory and you know it. And once you are playing in a place where there's, there's no space for you, but you're trying to carve space for yourself, it's going to get tight. And it's not going to be useful to you. I learned this thing of territories and... Once I started growing and I was going from one university to another, I finished my degree at UKZN and then I moved and went to WITS for my postgraduate degree. When I was at UKZN, I started understanding this thing of territories. When I got there, I was like, I need to play in my territory. 
I looked for the Student Christian Foundation. I was there. I found a church. I was within. Listen, I'm still young. I'm still hanging out with friends, doing whatever. But I was in my territory and I was playing in my power. And my power is my spirituality. My power is the Holy Spirit. My power is God. My power is Christ. And I needed to play in that power in order for me to be able to thrive in other areas. And even when I moved to Vitz, it wasn't, it wasn't hard for me. Listen, I found myself always in tricky situations. I've been, I've gone through it. <laughs> and I feel like my parents are going to find a lot, a lot of things about me through this YouTube channel. But I've, I've dabbled. This is the thing about it is that um, I'm young and I'm not a poster card for a person who's always done the right thing. And this is why I feel like the story is more relatable. It's because I'm not the girl who's always done the right thing. In fact, my mother will tell you that I've given her a headache throughout my life um, from just crazy decisions of like, I'm going to the United Kingdom for a year and I'm leaving you with my five-year-old to, um, oh, crazy things. I'm not going to work and I'm going to start my own business and, and have my own business and I'm not going to wait to get a job in this dire economy of South Africa, whatever it is. Um, but I've always just been a person who's faced life with just being brave and doing what I want, doing what I can, but I'm very careful to play in my territory, you know, and my territory is my strength. And so what is your territory? And in that territory, are you able to understand what, um, what God is saying to you? Like, do you, do you know what a nod from God is? And do you know what a no from God is? And how can you get to the place where you understand the two and how it is communicated to you? Because the way that God communicates to me is not the same that God, same way that God communicates to you. So what is a no in your life? And do you listen to that no? Or do you get that feeling and just think, ah, it's okay. <laughs> I'll be fine. Ah, he'll forgive me. You know? But it's not about that. It's not about the fact that you'll be forgiven. It's about playing in your territory. And that is empowering yourself. And that's so very important. I started finding so much more freedom when I was playing in my territory. So wherever I am, even when I moved here to California, the first thing I did was find a church. So the first Sunday I was here, I was at church. Um, because that's my territory and that's me playing in my power. And the move, I'll share more, more about my move and coming to California and how I sometimes even feel embarrassed when I'm speaking to other foreign nationals who move because they'll be like, it's so hard to find an apartment. And I'm like, mm, it was simple for me, <laughs> you know? Um, and like things like living expenses are so hard. Oh, this is, this. and I'm like, my colleagues came to, you know, my apartment and, you know, brought furniture. And half the furniture in my apartment is from, you know, my colleagues. So to help me start off, like things were like simple for me. But I'll share more about that as we go along in this journey. Um, but it's because I was playing in my power. I was playing in my territory. And the word of God says that he gives us the power um, and the passion to do what pleases him. And so being able to do what pleases God isn't only up to you. It is up to you to know what it is, but God gives you the power. He gives you the passion. Another version says he gives you the zeal to do what pleases him. So he gives us the, the, the desire to want to do what he desires us to do. So I saw my life shifting um, when I started playing in my power, where God was putting what the what putting his things in me and putting his desires in me where i'm like yo i know we're working here and we have cross nighting in the studio trying to do drawings but i've got cell group and i'm gonna go to cell group <laughs> so you're gonna give me an hour i'll be back um because i was playing in my power i knew um what i leaned on i knew what my hope was and and I was never, I don't ever want to be distracted from that. I don't ever want to not know what that is. There are a lot of things here yeah, that I've spoken about in the caption of this video. Um, me going to UCT and being like, this is my moment to shine. And then never graduating from UCT. Number two, falling pregnant at UCT and coming with the baby. Those are two different traumas for me. Then on the other spectrum, 
um, the caption of this video says, to pastor. And that has been an incredible part of my life, a very new part of my life. But kind of also being there, um, being a pastor and kind of just feeling unworthy, um, but leaning only on God's reassurance that I'm the one who called you and I have a specific task and a specific mandate upon your life that I need, it, that I need to be fulfilled. And I'm going to do it through you and your life and your testimony. And I'm going to do it through your gifts. I'm going to do it, do it through the skills that you've attained. And I'm going to do it through the experiences that, that you've gone through and that I've put you through as well. And that I've also loved you through. And then there's the master's graduate in the United Kingdom at Oxford Brooks, Brooks University. And that is a moment in itself, a testimony in itself. And all these little things that I'm counting right now are all testimonies and are definitely videos long enough for, for, for an episode each. And then there's also now my current life where I've moved to the, the United States and I'm a professor at Cal Poly University and how that has happened and when it happened. It happened in a very weird time of my life and now having to redefine the kind of woman that I am. And also just like thinking that everything is going to go perfectly, um, that was, that's never me. That's just never been my story. Things just do not go perfectly for me, ever. And that's the beauty in God's perfecting of my story. And I love it. I, listen, I'm crying most of the time, but, but I love it because I love God and I trust God so much with my life. There's so much that I want to share. There's so much that I have in my heart. There's so many things that I already share with on my Instagram, but I feel like this platform is going to allow me to really get in depth with some of the things that I think about, some of the things that I meditate upon, and I feel like are not mine. And that is the beauty of the gift that God has given you. It is not for you. It's actually for us. And you're being selfish by not sharing it with us because, because God hasn't given you your talents and your gifts for yourself but for us to share with and to grow from and to experience and to also know God's love and his wisdom through the gifts that he has given you. And so I'm really, really excited that you're here. And I'm going to also have a feature on this channel, which is Q&A. I believe that God has given me the gift to be able to counsel. And I'm also a trained lay counselor as well. So I love it when people ask me questions about particular topics or about their lives, and I'm able to answer that question on a platform like this because I feel it helps so many people because so many people do have questions, and I want to explore those questions um, together and see where we go. Exciting. Right now, I am so cheesed and buzzed about having a youtube channel because i feel like it's been a long time coming for me but i knew that i just needed the right time to kind of do it and put myself out there but this is going to be amazing and i'm going to love this um and i'm so excited for the journey ahead so till next time be blessed